going to start? Technically, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Technically, yes. Yes. Because um, I'm trying to like build a label. Yes. Fabish yes. Arts, I, I have a dream of it becoming a bigger label exactly. than it is right now because I think I've, I've done quite a number of pieces. Mm -hmm. So many of my artworks hanging in different houses of different families, over 200 right now. I think I'm headed somewhere. Okay, yeah. let's talk about this dream that you want, that, you, that you're talking about for Fabish Arts. Okay, what majorly about the dream? What majorly? Yeah, majorly okay. what about the dream? What do you envision Fabish Arts to do? Okay, what I envision Fabish Arts to do is to provide a lot and different services to different people. One major thing that I'm currently looking forward to do is uh, to help the street kids nurture their talents, majorly those who are artistically talented, fine artists. Like, I'm really looking forward to that because I've also helped so many different people come up, I've mentored people. I was also mentored by somebody who I respect a lot. He's called Nelim Choraje. He's, he's my favorite artist, that is, though he does colored pencil works. Okay. And uh, he taught me a lot. Okay. In the field of art. All right. Yeah. So that's what you want Fabish Arts to do. In yeah. The land, to be able to help out. Exactly. To mentor more people yeah. into this industry. Yeah. Is it just for fine artists or also anyone else who is into art? Okay. Anyone else who is into art. You know, art is not just uh, something like uh, mm -hmm. you can walk into class and then somebody starts teaching exactly. you one plus one. <laughs> then the following day you need to... Yes. Yeah, it has to be something within you right. because if right. you can't get that inspiration from within you, you can't get the passion to do it right. Mm. And uh, that's how you find that we have so many people who take fine arts in colleges, right? Yes, we do. But you find that somebody's just going to college to take fine arts just because he or she thinks that it's a course and that it if he taught. or she does it, she can be taught and master the, mm. the, the techniques of art. In real sense, it's not. Trust me, really? I've met so many people who take fine arts. They still come to me for mentorship. Why do they do that? <laughs> because, I don't know, it's, it's inborn. Yeah, I my, feel like mine fine is arts inborn. is usually so inborn. Yeah. I don't think you can really learn. Can you learn to draw if you can't draw? Yeah, you can. You can? You can. Because there are steps to take, like there are baby steps in art. Yeah, the baby I, steps. I, f I feel like art is one of those skills that you have to be inborn with. Yeah, like sure. finance. Like how do how do you perfect oh my goodness. It's just amazing because like this looks like the real photo and the real person. Oh my god. Look at those lips. You know, every time you start doing a sketch of something, mm -hmm. there's always something like a foundation. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's always a foundation to everything that you're trying to do. You just can't go there and then you expect to start drawing and the art be perfect immediately because i think like i was doing something mm -hmm. and i think well this could be yours maybe oh my goodness you guys surprise surprise yeah. guess who this is <laughs> <laughs> i came here in the morning and the first thing that i was trying to do was do a sketch of you. me that's exactly. the photo, you guys. I'll show you the original photo when we come back from break and then you'll see the comparison. Exactly. Right. So, like, uh, this is like the foundation of the art. It's so rugged and it's maybe not interesting. But when I finish this, the outcome could either be that or even this. The outcome could either be this or, or even this. this. But like, how can you say this is just a, a, a sketch? It looks perfect. It looks, it looks amazing. It looks like it's almost done. Are you saying this is not done? Not really. It's not done. I haven't even done the cloth. Is it like, is it almost done though? Yeah, it's almost done. I think I have something like uh, maybe 30 minutes to finish it up. How long does it take to do as an artwork? Okay. Like, okay, it, it depends, I'm sure. That depends on the detailing on the on the piece of art on you want to do. Right, like, uh, right. when I was doing this piece of art, okay. I don't know what you see in it. Personally, I interpret it differently. Uh, let me try and interpret, uh, in terms of how I'm seeing this yeah, castle. Yeah, exactly. When you see this piece of art, what do you see? Uh, um, homeless person. Homeless, that's one, two. Homeless, um... 
the surroundings is sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's okay. What I see. The reason why I did this space is because of the things that I see outside there. Each and every time, maybe you walk into town and you see kids begging all over. It's so sad. Most of them are covered in rugs, and this is what it feels like to really be so alone, having no one to take care of you, give you good shelter, clothing, food. True. Yeah, I call this alone. Yeah, so the reason why I call this alone is because really it's so sad to be alone. It is. And, and the street kids out there are alone. Yeah, they're so alone. Nobody even bothers to help them out. Mm. Yeah, so I think people should always be looking out for each other. Mm. Yeah, despite the fact that sometimes it's always every man for himself. Mm -hmm. I think we shouldn't be that mean. Okay, I feel like there's a story behind you and 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 the the street kids. Um, of course, we we all need to be empathetic to the less fortunate and the street yeah, kids out there. Exactly. But like, do you have a story behind that? Why, why are you so passionate about helping them out, trying to mentor them? And okay. tell me if you mentor them. Okay. Personally, I've uh, I've met people, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And there was this time, I think I was in, in class two. And my dad came home with some kid who was, uh, he was called Clinton. So when daddy came home, he said he came with a visitor and it was so sad. When Clinton came home, he was so alone, so sad. He was covered in drugs, scared of everything. And with time, he said for a while, but later on we realized that he had parents, though the parents were so poor, they couldn't really help out their child. But with Clinton coming home, getting exposed, learning new things, I'm glad that today he's a civil engineer. Wow. Yeah, he's still a very good friend of mine. And yeah. That's why maybe I'm, I'm always so attached and maybe so sorrowful about street children because a number of them outside there are so smart. It's not like every street kid who is out there is just there maybe because he or she wants to. Yeah, there are some of them who just go there because they are so hard. But some of them out there are really, smart. really face it. Okay. And they're very smart and they have talents. Some of them saying, some dance, but nobody gives a damn about that. Okay. Yeah. So, right now, yeah. is there something that you're doing, you know, towards getting towards your goal, which is to... Yeah, them? there's something I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a friend called Caroli Arts. And uh, Caroli is also a good pencil artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's so good. We learned so many things together. He taught me how to do biro art. Whoa. And I think I have how, some... How do you do biro art? Is, is it like, is it harder than pencil art? Because you don't have to, you can't rub it. Yeah, right? you can You can never really rub biro art. And I think I have one piece here of oh a couple. Oh my goodness. That's big. Guys, can you see this? I hope you can. So tell me a little bit about biro art. Biro art has a lot. Mm -hmm. One thing, for me, it's the easiest. It is? Yeah, to me, I think Bayro is so easy for me. I feel like, Yanni, there's no, there's no messing around. <laughs> there's just perfection. <laughs> yeah, Bayro art, Bayro art is uh, so easy to do. Okay. It's all about hatches. You don't need so many materials like a rubber, mm -hmm. pencil, tissue to smudge and all that. Ah. All you need is just a pen. Just a bite open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you can come up with this. So let me ask you. No, wait. Yeah? Yes, you can ask me. Yeah. Let me ask you. Here's a situation where you find that people are walking outside there, crying a lot that, oh, there are no jobs, there are no jobs. When you can only use a bite open, I think it's around 15 shillings. One ballpoint pen maybe could do such portraits around three. 
and one of these is 1500 shillings for an FO. So with a 15 shilling biro, you can make like almost 4500 Kenyan money. So I'm really urging people out there, wow. the youth, like we really need to be creative. Okay. You have the talent, just try do something. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about now art. <laughs> Okay, I know we've talked about person, yeah, uh, person, yeah. uh, personal things a lot. Yeah, Just now talk about the art. The, okay. I've heard you talk about different um, aspects of, the, you've called it pen, pencil art? Yeah. And then bio art? Yeah, then you have color pencil color art. Color pencil, and you, you have one. Let's yeah. just see the example that you had. Oh, I think we should see that after the break because I think oh, it's okay. not on set. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you have the color, color, color yeah, pencil art? Yeah, I do art. color pencil art. Okay. I do biro mm. and also do pencil art. But I'm learning something new. I'm trying to use paints of lead, though I haven't perfected it yet, but I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what is the difference between this kind of art, yeah. the a portrait sort of yeah. you do portraits yeah. and the people who do abstract work okay the difference is like for us like we pencil artists you know you take jobs on commission okay yeah okay. and for abstract works you find that somebody sits down then most of the things come from imagination <laughs> yeah. you get so with imaginative kind of art it's sort of hard to sell okay yeah okay it's somehow hard to sell. Mm -hmm. So in most okay. cases, okay. we tend to we tend to try to do something that could reach out to more people. Uh, where the people are more familiar. With. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like you know, this is more of like photography. Yes, yeah. yes, it's I can just relate like, with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can it's more it of photography. House. So with us artists who do portraits, like for people, it's. Uh, it's so much interesting because you also promote fellow artists. You know, for, uh, photographers are very good artists. Yes, they are. Yeah, like let's say this portrait that I did for the street children. I think the person who did this photography is so proud right now. Mm -hmm. This one, I took it from somebody called Ojo Photography. Wow. He's a very good photographer. I All like right. his work. And All right. okay. I've done, I think, about three or two of his mm -hmm. uh, pictures. All right. Yeah, so... That's the difference between this sort of art that yeah. I'm doing. The benefits, actually, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. This one is more beneficial. Yeah, it's more beneficial. Mm -hmm. Though, it's not like abstract is not beneficial. It's it's damn expensive when you sell. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I know abstract art is very, very expensive. Yeah. And uh, in most cases, you find that not everybody can afford. afford it. But for portraits, if I can do this as cheap as 1,500 shillings, then I think many people will always come for this. Right. Yeah, so right. because you, you really have to keep on paying your bills, mm -hmm. you need to eat, you need to move around. So, like, how many pieces have you done? Let's so far. Let's give me a rough estimate. Mm, right now, I think I came here with around 17 pieces. Wow. That's here. And uh, I think I've done so many pieces. My Instagram is, like, having over <laughs> 750. Oh and goodness. I started doing portraits Kitambo. Even before I started knowing about social media. Okay. So yes, I've done so many pieces, over You've 500 done pieces. So many pieces. Yeah. Tell me the things that you cannot leave the house without. One thing, I can't leave the house without a pencil. Uh -huh. My backpack. At least a piece of blank paper. Yeah, I can't live without this. Wow. Yeah. Do you like go sometimes to a, a station? Anywhere, yeah. like in town or somewhere, mm. and just start drawing for yeah. people to see? Yeah. yeah, there's a time I do that. But oh. majorly, I do it at City Park. Okay, guys, so if you are nearby City Park, please be going there. Yeah, uh, sure. Because I also wanted to see you do. I know that you will do something with that unfinished piece of art. True. Uh, almost at the end, we'll display how he does the finishing... How, what do you call it? Okay, fine. We just, like, just finish the portrait. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> All right, yeah. so... Um, now let's talk about the the inspiration behind what you do. And also, do you do other any other drawings other than portraits yeah i do other drawings apart from portraits and uh, you asked me about my inspiration things yes. that inspire me yes what i see that make me do some pieces yes. i think i have a few pieces here mm -hmm. that i would talk about right now um, should i talk about cock first should i talk about selena should i talk, talk about, about the, first, the, the, the wine that wine glassish thing is it a wine glass or an arg? I think for me, I'm used to seeing it. Maybe you should and maybe display it too. Um, it's a wine glass. 
yeah, mm -hmm. a wine glass and what's inside it? Let me put this first here. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm seeing a wine glass with water. I hope it's water. Yeah. And it looks like a shark. Yes, it's a shark. Okay. Mm -hmm. A wine glass is majorly noticed to take water. Right. So it's obvious that whatever is inside it is alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Now, a simple question. Okay. This one still goes to you. Okay. Like, uh, when you take alcohol, what are the major problems that you're really likely to face? I am likely to face uh, immediate or not really, long -term? not really immediate. At least long term. Maybe. Um, I'm likely to be to to affect my liver. Okay. It's affecting my liver. Um, alcohol also gets people addicted. Yeah, to sure. it. Alcohol also kills. Okay. Yes, in the long term, it also kills. Exactly. Now let's look at this. This is like a caution. To those who take mm -hmm. too much alcohol, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. alcohol eats people from the inside. Okay. It's more or less like taking sharks into your stomach and then, <laughs> yeah, so that's the meaning of that. Whoa. That wine glass and that alcohol inside and that piece of oh, wow. fish in it that is so aggressive. Right. Trust me, that really mm -hmm. dwells with mm -hmm. killing people. Mm -hmm. So to the teens out there, let's really refrain from too from much drug use. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also betting that you are against drug use. Yeah, true. Very much. I am. Yeah. Okay. So the other piece of art that you were going to show. Okay, me. I'll talk about Avril. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. That's Avril for you. Wow, she looks so pretty. Yeah. Avril, Avril, Avril. Avril is uh, <laughs> one of my female favorite musicians in Kenya. Wow. And there's one thing I didn't know that a real can do so much better than music. Is? <laughs> there was this movie I was watching called uh, World Stuff Outing. Yeah. It's a Kenyan movie. I think I've really the starring with some guy. I don't remember his name. But uh, whatever she did there was about... Uh, I think it was about... Moreover... Eastlands and Westlands kind of mm -hmm. life, yeah? Mm -hmm. The number nine kind of life right, and the Lovington right, right. kind of life, you get yes. it. So Avril is really an ambassador to making people understand different things in life. Okay. Yeah, because in that movie, Avril acts a very hard character for anyone to do. And I'm surprised that despite the fact that whatever she was acting was sort of not something I thought she could do. I just come to realize that it's the situation she was in that was making her do that business in the, mo in the, in the movie that I was watching. Okay. So Avril is also trying to teach people that despite the, f the, 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 despite the fact that people live in hard types of different lives, we can really make it by doing something else. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So okay. that's why I did this piece and okay. I dedicated it to her. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, another thing I'll talk about is uh, this, this. The final piece that we're talking about. Okay. Exactly. Wait. Have I put it the right way? Is it the Not really. This way. Exactly. Okay. That's a Coca-Cola can. Yes. I don't know how many people take Coke every day. Uh, I don't know, but it it's a lot. So I, I feel like Coca-Cola is also addictive. I feel like yeah. people who take cock, cock, <laughs> cock itself, cock, cock, the cock, yeah. they usually pass for it more than people who don't take cock. True. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that's one. That's one. And two, what do you say when you say that? It's dropped. Glittering. It's dropped and sort of... People have littered. Yeah. Why do we have to litter our streets? Really? So it's littering? Yeah. Yay, I you got it. You should stop littering our streets. Like, okay. you use a Coca-Cola can... Please try to dispose it somewhere that mm. it could be picked up for recycling right, again. Right, so right. that's another you know, message. It's, it's interesting because yeah. with these companies, they actually ask you to drop it back exactly. so it can be reused, yeah. it can be recycled. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that's amazing. So now let's talk about the process of drawing. Let me take me step by step. Let's look for one piece. Like, uh, give me one, another piece we talk about. So there's this piece. Yeah. 
What is the first thing that you do when you see like a picture and then you're trying to put the picture on paper? Okay, the different ways of drawing art on paper. Okay. The first one, we can grade. There's something called photo grading. Mm -hmm. If you did geography in high school, I think, you know, there was this point of photography and stuff, there's mm -hmm. grading. Right, if you yeah. did photo uh, geography, guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's grading, whereby you draw squares on the original picture, then you transfer it to another paper by drawing what? the same grids and doing it like a graph, sort of. Is that hard? No, it's not. It looks hard. No, it's not. On, on, so on which photo though? Because uh, most of the photos that you get are, you know, soft copy. Okay, you know, it's so good that technology is promoting art. Mm -hmm. If you go to Google Play, there's an app called Grid App. Oh. It can help you grid pictures okay. on soft copy. Oh. So what you just do is now take the paper you want to use for drawing, grade it, and then just transfer it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's one way. That's one way. Number right. two, we have... Uh, we have something called a lighting table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could use a glass table, print the picture you want to use, place it on top of the table, then put light under the glass, and then take a blank paper you want to use and trace on it. Mm, okay, so that's tracing. Yeah, that's tracing majorly. Most people used to do that in high school when you were told to draw the heart. You know, let me, tell you, you let me tell you paper. something. <laughs> it's not bad to trace. Really? Trust me, it's not. But uh, the problem is, mm -hmm. let's see, you trace a piece of art, mm -hmm. yeah? yes. let's say for example this one, before you do the face, okay. you see they're just lines and... Yes, they're just lines, the Really? Does it... Is it even pleasing, just the sketching? Mm. No, no. It, it doesn't. doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. So, anybody can sketch. Okay. Anybody can right. sketch. Okay, okay. Now, the difference will always come when somebody needs to know to put the skill on that sketch. Making the shades, carving exactly. the faces. The fine details. Exactly. Now, how do you, how do you achieve fine details? What fine details, I have different types of, uh, Wait, of but shading. You, oh, you hadn't finished talking about how you do it. How do you do it? For me? Yes. Okay, like here, mm -hmm. I'm using two techniques. Mm -hmm. There's the cross hatching on your face. Okay. And then yeah. on your hair, there's the... Rugged, rough, mm -hmm. whatever. So mm -hmm. it's more or less two types of different shades. Right. After this, I'll take a tissue, smudge it. Which, so where, which part are you smudging now mm -hmm. for the tissue? Almost everywhere. You smudge everywhere? Yeah, you smudge everywhere. Sure for you to get example. the smooth... Uh, oh. For you to get the smooth... The smooth what? The smooth transition of the oh. face, the lighting, and all so that. Like, like this one. Exactly. Smudging. So you just have to smudge it off, mm. pole pole. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It feels like you take like a long time. Is it a long? How long do you take to do a piece? It depends on the details. Like uh, this again. one. Okay. Like this one. <laughs> this one took me like. Uh, let me see. I started. I started this piece the other day. It was around six in the evening. I did it until 12.30 midnight, mm -hmm. went to bed. Then when I woke up again, I did it for like four to five hours. So it took me more or less 10 hours to do oh, this. And this is you doing it consistently those hours? Yeah, You're exactly. not doing anything else? Yeah, I'm not doing anything else. Wow. Yeah. If the detail is too much, then the work is more. But if it's mm -hmm. just uh, a piece of work that is more or less like mm -hmm. uh, this one, mm -hmm. This one I could do it for like two hours, mm, maybe one. You're done. Yeah. Oh my god. But you know, like these pictures look so real. Thank so you. So real. Yeah. So. Do people get amazed by your work? Yeah, a lot. If nobody's amazed, they don't think I could be getting commissions to do. <laughs> I don't think I could be paying bills either. <laughs> Let me ask you, what of what is the one of the best commissions you've ever gotten? Okay. One of the best commissions I've ever gotten was uh there was this one. I think it was my first client. Wow. Yeah, although it was just five Gs. It was just five Gs? Yeah. How much? Okay, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so okay. the first one was just five Gs? Yeah, it was. It, five actually, thousand. he was. Five he thousand was, for those he was, he, was my, he was my first client. He's somebody called uh, 
I think he's a he's a policeman. He's an OCS right now. I think in Mandera. Okay. So this guy saw my work on FB. Then he was like, "Oh, you're doing a good job. How much can you do for this?" By then, I didn't even know I could sell art. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, yeah. you were just doing it for fun. Yeah. Then okay. I told him, "I think I could do an F four at a thousand shillings." Then he was like, "You need something bigger." Then I'm like, "I think I could do you an a three at around two k." Then he was like, "No, I need something bigger." Then I'm like, okay, fine. Let me do you an A1. A1 is so big. Really That's big. like almost 64 inch of a TV or maybe wow. 42. Okay, so it's really big. Yeah, it was so big. Then he was like, okay, fine. Do me that one. I'll pay you 5k. Then I'm like, okay, fine. Let me do the job. I was so excited. I did the job and delivered it all the way to Bumala. <laughs> What? Yeah, but then I think he was in Bumala. Okay. So he kept on giving me jobs, wow. and then I started learning. Okay. Uh -huh. Because I noticed I was I was kind of doing the job at more of my own expense, not earning anything, so I was going to earn oh, 200. Okay, okay. So I was like, okay, so this thing can make money. So I started meeting other artists who had already been in the business, like Nelly Mchoraji, okay, Karoli okay, okay. Arts, Denom yes. Genge, mm. and all those others. Then I noticed there were papers that I was supposed to buy, cheaper frames and all that. Then, <laughs> yeah, I started getting interested in the art more. Yeah. Yeah, by then I think I was still in school. I was still taking my IT. So my life sort of changed. Wow. So I was not calling dad anymore for money, pocket money and all that because it's like I was earning. Earning for yourself. Yeah. yeah, so with time, he started referring me to people. Mm -hmm. FB gave me more jobs and more and more and more and more. Wow. Yeah, so, so far I've done portraits that are even worth around 20k for one piece. Yeah, I've done pieces that I've sent abroad, almost three or four. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. All right. Guys, art pays. Wow. Um, uh, we want to go on a really, really short break, but we will be right back. But before we go on a short break, please comment and talk to us through our social media handles, Facebook, Focus TV Kenya, Instagram, Focus TV underscore Kenya, and Twitter at Focus TV Kenya. Remember, we have Focus Journalism School that has intake ongoing, 30% discount on every enrollment and registration happening uh, from today all the way till January 15th. We have certificate and diploma courses available. Available. Some of the uh, courses that we have is DJing, we have film production, we have mass communication and journalism. We have computer packages, we have graphic design, we have digital marketing, we have motion graphics, sound engineering. And as you can see on the poster, it looks quite beautiful, right? And remember, we are the best because we have a TV station here. So you get to learn as you come and do the practicals on set. All right, so we are going on a really short break. We'll be right back.